so sorry. Girl, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. Can you talk about the, the actual production of the film and sort of how you maintain that level of mayhem during a shoot? What you see isn't like this one-off party night. Um, we actually, you know, we spent a lot of time making sure everyone's like in a, in a position or a situation like where they're comfortable, they can enjoy themselves. Um, you know, we had music playing for them. Yeah, just keeping that energy up. Your role in this as a sort of as a facilitator to make this happen. Yeah, um, a fixer also. <laughs> fixer. Yeah. Your your name was was the first name I kind of heard attached to it and everything. Yeah. But it's certainly your signatures on the movie. I, I think Michael Bacall's voice is clear in the film. Yes. So what was your role on the picture? From the inception, I mean, I went to Mike Bacall with an idea, and me and Mike sort of brainstormed this idea, and then Matt Drake came on and wrote a draft of the script, and then. We got Nima. I mean, it's what, the role of any creative producer, which is basically getting the ball rolling. You guys burn the world down at the end of this film <laughs> is the way it feels. Um, to see something like this really feel dangerous, that's exciting. Oh, I'm glad you said yeah. that. I, I agree with you entirely, yeah. and it is. You're right. I love to make movies about mayhem, as you know, and I love to make movies about bad behavior and bad decisions, you know, and, and <laughs> which is always yeah. what it really starts with. And. Um, yeah, and I think Nima and the guys and everybody involved really took that mayhem to another level. And that's what I mean by Apocalypse Now. There are moments in this where it just feels like the world is burning, like when you walked in and said that. It just felt like this is the end. Now, you guys shot at the Warner Ranch, correct? Yeah. It's Which is not there anymore. Because Well, my, my first thought looking at this is there's no way this is a neighborhood because nobody would put up with no, this. No, of course, yeah. How long were you guys there? How long was the actual shoot for this? We shot around seven weeks, seven and a half weeks at, well actually five of that was at the house, four and a half of that was nights. Um, so it started to feel actually like you, you lived on that street. Well, Nima came to me in the beginning and he was like, you know, I quite like to shoot this in a real street. I really, I really think this has to be authentic. We've got to get a real neighborhood where we can shoot this. I mean, Nima, I'm going to explain to you how this works. There is not, we couldn't shoot for one night in any neighborhood. Well, I'm like, you know, like, like, pull some strings. I'm yeah, like, he's not on, like, man, uh, you can he's like, can't we just like, get a neighborhood? I go, look, you have two choices. There's the Warner Ranch and there was this other facility in Downey where it's basically state, you know, where you control the world because there's not anyone would put up with what we did here. Even on a small scale, there's a, a huge feeling of release and rebellion. You guys have just externalized how that feels on those nights, I think. Yeah, I mean, and, and just to go back to, to, to the first thought of this whole movie is really, how do you make, and, and I'm not comparing this movie to that because it's one of the great movies of all time, but how do you make a risky business for now? Tom Cruise made some really bad decisions in risky business, <laughs> but we rooted for him the whole time to get away with it, and we love that movie. And it's like, what? How, how do you tell that story nowadays? You know what I mean? And in, in, in with, with that same idea of like, you just want it to work out for these three guys. And uh, I don't know. That was that was the inception. I was just thinking about that. <laughs>